Hey guys, welcome back to Toy Shop. Today I'm going to show you the easiest way to put your rear suspension back in your sled, and then we're going to get it lined up. Alright, so we're going to start off with having an endless ratchet strap. This is just kind of the easiest thing to use. Just loops back to itself. First thing we want to do is we want to take this rear set of idlers and we want to make this as short as possible to give us the most room inside the track while we're trying to fight with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come from this shaft up in here and find another shaft down in there and I'm gonna ratchet strap it down and that'll give us more room inside the track. All right, now that we got that sucked down in, we're gonna stick the rear of the skid in the track first and then we're going to work the front of it inside the lugs where it needs to go in the track. So we want to try to get the rear axle set right in the grooves that it's going to sit in and then work the front end. All right, get it close anyways. All right, the front's in. Now we just gotta finish getting the rear axle in. Um, leave the top. All right, so some of the key notes for doing this is you want the rear end of your sled up as high as you can get it. I've got this little homemade stand that lifts it up that works really well. Um, another thing you want to do is you want to make sure your rear axle is all the way back as far as you can get it. I didn't, I guess maybe not necessarily all the way back, but when I took the rear skid out, I had to loosen up the axle to give me some track slop. You just want to make sure that, that rear axle isn't pushed out all the way. And then I showed you guys how to ratchet strap this rear set of idlers down. That helps give us more slack in the track. So with all those things, the rear suspension goes in pretty easy actually. We're gonna keep that strap down to just to give us as much track slack as we can. Cause the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put these front suspension bolts in. So we're gonna kind of pull the track back and centered. And then we're gonna try to get this moved over or set down to try to get the height about right over there. Let's get the tunnel dropped down somewhere close. All right, so we got this drop down pretty close. I'm probably within an inch up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a two by four and a pry bar, and I'm just gonna kind of use that to pick the front of the skid up so I can start getting a bolt started. All right, that's one side. Now we're gonna go do the same thing the other side, just use a pry bar to kind of fine tune it up and down, get the other one started, and then we're gonna move to the back. All right, now that we're at this point, we're gonna take that ratchet strap and we're gonna break it loose. That will bring that back up to height. And then we're gonna kind of finish setting the tunnel down till they get pretty close. Now, my bet is, is that the bolt on the skid is gonna to be too far backwards. So we're not gonna take that ratchet strap completely out of it. We're just gonna let it get loose. And then probably what we'll end up having to do is use that ratchet strap right where it's at to bring it, to ratchet strap it back closer so we can get that bolt to line up. So we gotta loosen it up, but don't take it off. All right, so maybe a mental note if you're watching this before you do it. I stuck the ratchet strap too close to the bottom down here so I couldn't undo it by just opening it up because I didn't have enough room. So when you ratchet strap it, try to keep the, the mechanism closer up that way so you have enough room to open it up while you're under here. All right, so I'm pretty close. The hole is up under here. 
where the threads are and the hole that I got to get it through is here. So I'm pretty close height wise. I can't bring it down anymore or else I'll be below it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten that ratchet strap to bring it forward, get me lined up front and back first, and then I'll use a pry bar with a two by fours to get me my height. So I don't want to steer anybody astray, but I realized it after I shot it, but that bolt doesn't go up in here. The bolt goes up here. So if you have that hole down here, I probably wouldn't use it unless that's where it was. Because if you drop the rear of the skid down, it's going to put more ski pressure on it. So I would put the bolt back where you had it. Actually, everything was lined up. I got it lined up for that hole, and all I did was have to pry it up farther, and it was lined up this way already so just don't want to lead you guys astray all right so we got it up in the air right now you want to make sure your axle still is loose and you want to make sure these jam nuts on this bolt are backed off we got to get all this slack out of here a pretty decent rule of thumb is like you want to be able to pull down on the track with a little bit of pressure and fit two fingers underneath the slide so between the slide and the track you want to kind of fit two fingers in there so we also want to make sure it's even. So I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to start running, running these bolts in, pushing that axle back until we start to get pretty close. Then we're going to have to fire the sled up and we're going to have to spin the track. And then I'll show you after that. So when I broke this loose to get this all apart, I left the jam nuts pretty close to where they were. So I just got everything kind of rough tightened up right now. I've got a lot of the slack drawn out of this track. I think before I go any farther, I want to get it fired up and see how far off center we are because we're pretty close on our track tension. I can kind of get two fingers in there if I push down. So, I mean, you don't want to try to have to hang off of the track to get two fingers in there. But so we're going to fire it up and run it and I'll show you what to look at. So we spun it around. This track's pretty close. I might snug them up each, both like another half a turn or so. But what I want to show you is the best way to kind of check and see to make sure that the track is actually centered. The track here, I don't know how well you can see it. There's a steel clip in this window or that breaks up this window in the track. The steel clip comes up on this lug and on this lug. Pretty much every other lug has a steel clip in it. So what you want to do is you want to kind of make sure that there's an equal gap between the slide rail and that steel clip on both sides of the track. So you want to kind of reach your arm around both sides of the back of the sled and feel and kind of make sure it's even. I'm just gonna kind of go like this on both sides. It feels pretty even right now. Another way to check it if you've got it is a set of calipers you can go from the head of the bolt back to really anything that's going to be the same on the other side i'm going back to the the aluminum threaded part on the rail that this bolt actually threads into and i'm going to take a measurement on this side from the head of the bolt up to there and then i'm going to just make sure the, that they measure the same on both sides so we made our final adjustments here i got this even on both sides our track tension looks pretty good. So, um, got these jam nuts tightened up, got the axle tightened up, and I'm gonna fire it up one more time just to make sure that it's even on both sides, and then this is good to ride. There you have it, guys. Hopefully you guys found this interesting, and check out some of my other videos over here. So, but until next time, peace.